Blog Talk Radio. Hi everyone, this is Camille from sunny California, and you're listening to the Coffee Chat with Camille show, which is a podcast series that interviews various guests about real life topics for people who love to learn. Hi, everyone. We have a very special guest, and her name is Judy Rodman. The title of our show is Why the Sound of Your Voice Matters. I'm going to give a brief um, biography uh, about Judy. Judy is an award-winning vocal coach, recording artist, performer, speaker, author, songwriter, studio producer, and blogger or podcaster. Judy specializes in training the professional singing and speaking voice. She has over five decades of professional success with her own voice. Her students have appeared on the Today Show, Letterman, DeGeneres, The Voice, American Idol, America's Got Talent, Grammys, CMA, ACM and MTV Awards, New York Times bestseller list. Okay, and then, um, oh, you can um, reach Judy for sign-ups. Uh, she has a sign-up for a free five-page report on your vocal health, plus her newsletter. It is judyrodman.com, judyrodman.com forward slash newsletter signup.htm okay but it's actually in our show description and it will also be the link will also be um, uh, at coffeechatwithcamille.com on her episode page as well okay all right Judy's waiting and I can't wait to get talking with her chatting I mean (laughs) hi Judy welcome hi I'm so glad to be here with you it's just a pleasure to have you. Um, I just feel like so honored. And I I want uh, to let you know, we just have as you know, probably, but we have 30 minutes and we have 10 questions to get through. So I'd like to go okay. ahead and start our interview. Mm-hmm. What are the requirements for a successful vocal career? Well, to put it in a nutshell, really, you want to be really, really excellent at your craft, uh, meaning your voice and uh, the way you use it to communicate messages that get responses. So your, your actual art of, of using your voice and ability. And the other thing you need to do is be really excellent at doing current music business. And that doesn't mean, you know, the way music business was successful in the past that means you have to kind of keep up with today's uh, business models and strategies that are working so that you become visible. Excellent. Well, if nobody knows then, about you. Yes. And then, uh, thank you. How can you change your voice to become a better communicator? Well, you can, first of all, understand something that most people don't think about, and that is what the voice really exists for. And what I tell all my clients and, and, and everyone is to think of it as existing only to deliver messages, okay? So how do you know you successfully deliver a message? Well, you know, a lot of times, Camille, we're not even talking to the person the words are to, like we might be, if we're recording a podcast like this, we might be talking into the microphone, you know, like to the microphone. Well, we should be obviously talking into it, but we really need to be talking to the heart that's on the other side of it. Okay, and the reason that's important for changing your voice and making your voice better is that the value of the voice is in the strength of the response you get from the heart you're talking to. So when you're singing, 
you're really doing some acting technique. If you're, if you're good, you're, you're not necessarily talking to the audience. You're talking. The song is the lyrics are written to for the audience. Okay. And to take it one step further, the way you know that you're success, you're successfully communicating a message is that you get the response you want to it. That tells you what kind of voice, what kind of sound, what kind of delivery that you need to make. It tells you if you need to be louder or softer or uh, if your tone needs to be richer or thinner because different tones communicate different messages. So I like to start from the end and come back. Like, what do I want my response from this heart that I'm talking to, to be. And then the re- then you, you, uh, you have a certain number of crayons in your crayon box of vocal tone and vocal ability. And training your voice actually just gives you more crayons. So I, I hope all that makes sense. Yes, it does. And then can all vocal problems be fixed? Almost All vocal problems can be fixed unless there is organic damage. And that means, you know, if there is spasmodic dysphonia, which is a neurological, actually actually neurological condition, or um, if there's been a damage, severe damage to your vocal cords, say from uh, cancer or something like that. But a lot of times vocal damage even can be, uh, successfully healed even without a lot of medical advent- uh, uh, intervention. Although if you suspect medical uh, d- uh, vocal damage, you do need to get seen by a doctor because, you know, you might be messing with throat cancer and not know it or something like that. But yes, the answer is yes. Most vocal damage can be healed by using your voice differently with different technique. Are you there? Oops, did I lose you? Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, okay. the, thank you for your last answer to the question. And yeah. then, mm-hmm. How does one find their own unique vocal sound? That is a wonderful question because you don't want to just sound like a robot or like everybody else because – the uniqueness of your own voice kind of, you know, gets the responses coming to you rather than the person you're emulating. So how to find your unique voice, whether you're speaking or singing. And of course it really goes into singing uh, uh, this, this idea of uniqueness. And the way you find it is first of all, what does your heart connect with? What is your value system, your experience in life? What kind of voice does that connect with? Is it a shouty voice? Is it a really meek voice? Is it a, you know, a changing voice? Is it the types of songs that you sing go into what your voice is? What kind of lyrics does your, do you resonate with personally? Okay. And the second thing is what kind of sound does your voice easily make? And if it doesn't easily make a sound you want to make, that's where, Vocal training can really help. But what does your voice do easily? You know, Uh, does it does it tend to be more straight tone? Does it tend to use more vibrato? Does it uh, what what is the actual physical way your voice likes to work? And then the third uh, kind of thing you want to look at is where are the windows open to the commercial value of that, of that voice, you know? So if you like, if you're choosing a song as a singer first, do you, can you get into it? Can you really legitimately communicate the message in that song Two, Does your voice feel good singing in that genre that the song is kind of written in? And yes, you can change, you can change the genres of songs by singing them a little differently, but usually you'll hear a demo of something in a particular genre. So 
where does your voice feel good with that kind of melody um, and, and like that. And then third, is there a fan base out there that also loves that kind of song? And if you match up all three, then you're the only one that can put those three together the way only you can. Does that make sense? Yes. And then what are the same, what are some differences, excuse me, in stage and studio performance? That's a great question because most people don't know. And, but, but many times people that are veteran stage performers will get in the studio and freeze. And like, you know, they feel so um, insecure and they're not controlling their voice like they normally can. And they feel this kind of sterile environment of a studio. And it just doesn't call up because there's nobody there. The audience is not there or the listener is not usually there. Um, it, it's a blank slate that they're seeing. So what you have to do about that is you have to make up in your own mind like an avatar of the person the lyric is to. And you have to go into acting technique and like imagine, let's playing with your imaginary friends here. You imagine getting the look on their face. Like, you know, you and I are talking right now. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to say this in a way that I might get your eyebrows to go up or I might get you to cock your head like, oh, I've never thought of it that way. And I might pause if I think that you might not have gotten that, I'll re-say it a different way. So anyway, in the studio, you've got to use your imagination where live, uh, you've got the audience in front of you. Now, even live though, and, and, and the other thing about in the studio is that you're usually not holding a mic, right? So you can tend to have arms like rib anchors, which kind of rib caged in and down and you lose control of your breath because your rib cage needs to be wide so your diaphragm is stretched wide and holds back air appropriately so that you've got this uh, compression engine for breath instead of just blowing air through your vocal cords you've got control of that air. to do that is wide ribs and again if you don't know better in the studio, you might be hanging your arms kind of limply at your sides. Or if you're doing like we are right now with the podcast, we might be leaning over into the mic, which drops the rib cage. And all of a sudden, our breath is not working as well, right? Now, on stage, uh, sometimes people that do a lot of studio work find it hard to be on stage because they can't control their environment as much. And they are having to deal with something they can see in front. And that's, again, you have to imagine, you, first of all, you have to be really clear on who the lyric is to or who the speech is to. If you're a, a professor and you're in front of a class, don't talk to the whole room. Don't sing to the whole venue. Instead, sing to the one heart or talk to the one heart of the room. And so that's true for studio and for live stage, but there's, there's a lot of other variations like live. You, you can't do it more than once, right? You generally don't get a redo. So in the <laughs> studio, you can redo something that calls up a different kind of energy. So that, that there's a lot of things different. And I go into this a lot in my, uh, I've got a, uh, a course called singing in the studio, that talks about the difference between live and studio where you can actually grow your ability to do whatever you're weaker in, you know. Great. Excellent. And then um, how can we avoid vocal fatigue and strain when using the voice for long hours? Well, that goes right back to what I was talking about, about breath control, because breath is the voice's bitter enemy. <laughs> it's like the monster that must be controlled, like atomic energy. 
a little bit goes a long way to powering the grid and doing all kinds of good things. A little bit too much and poof, you know. The same thing goes with the voice. We need air, obviously, to run through the vocal cords and create vibration. But we have to control that air. And the way you do that, most people don't realize what they're doing. If they come from, like they power their voice from the diaphragm area or the, or the belly, m- most of the time they're dropping the rib cage and allowing, it, it's, the diaphragm then becomes like a, a trampoline or a, a, a drum head. If it's not strung, wide, you know, strung uh, where it's wide, it's stretched wide, then it's going to be able to move too much air. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to stretch the diaphragm out like a well-strung trampoline or drum head. And the way you do that is by moving your head back over your tailbone. If you're standing, you need to be speaking or singing from your heels instead of the balls of your feet. If you're sitting, you need to be parking your head over your tailbone instead of over your thighs. And that's something podcasters do all the time. Pull If you pull your head back, you're going to have to usually pull your mic to you or move your knees forward so you can do that and not be too far from the mic. But that's what you need to do. And you'll notice when you move your head back, your rib cage opens. And that controls breath. Well, that's the protector for your voice. Because you... Controlled air through your cords instead of an uncontrolled flashlight beam, right? And yeah. that that tiny little ray of of air, sort of, if you can think of it that way, uh, it almost feels like you're not even using any air, even though you are taking a good breath. So you widen your rib cage, and that you'll find if you make that simple change, you'll find a huge difference in your fatigue level at the end of a long period of talking. Okay, that's an excellent tip. And then what are the responsibilities of the successful voice? Oh, I love that you asked that. The thing is that an influencer, you know, you can think of a successful voice as an influencer because people, you know, listen to what is sung and listen to what is said by someone that they respect. And if you are successfully gaining an audience, then the the response to your messages that are in your songs or your speeches is your responsibility. So that's it in a nutshell. You know, look at your set list. Do you really feel comfortable and feel good at bringing the hearts of the people you're singing to to that message? It doesn't mean you have to be Pollyannish and only talk or sing about good things. But when you are addressing the dark and when you are singing songs about pain or about, you know, the blues and stuff like that, you need to do it in such a way that there's some element of bringing the light at, at the end. You know, whether it's a cautionary tale or just a lamentation like you've all been there. I know you have. Don't worry about it. You're not the Lone Ranger. Just don't feel bad about it because I'm that way too. You know, it's something that that makes you the hero and and brings your audience to a better place after they've listened to the song. That's what I mean by being responsible in the arts. Oh. And then how can the voice affect a business person's success? Well, the tone of voice dictates the response you get. And that's a fact. So if your uh, voice is harsh, if your voice has tons of vocal fry, it, it doesn't mean you're not successful, but it sure means you could be more successful if you get that stuff out of your voice because your voice becomes much more listenable. And different tones, uh, there's a whole blog uh, or podcast rather called Audio Branding by my my friend uh, Jody uh, Krangle. And and she talks about how different sounds are even played in restaurants 
that can make different different kinds of songs or different kind of music make people eat more or make people leave quicker. <laughs> so <laughs> the tone of voice calls out different responses. In the stores, they use different kinds of songs to encourage people to browse a little bit longer, right? Uh, so in, in business, you want your voice to get the response that you want to to uh, you want to convey authenticity by the sound of your voice. You want to convey that you understand their problems. And if you don't and you feel like a dictator or a narrator or you've said this so many times in your board stiff, that's not going to get you the response you want. So there's, a, there's just a whole thing about the response that you want for your business and the sound of your voice that you're using to offer or connect with the customer. Excellent. And then what does it take to succeed in a vocal career? Well, that goes back to the first question you asked. What really, the thing that it takes is the the dual success of both having a lot of, uh, uh, just an, uh, an excellent uh, control of your craft and it, uh, but you need to be a communicator so that uh, whatever genre you're singing in you don't have to have the biggest range in the world a lot of times background singers for that artist can sing better than the artist can sing wider ranges than the artist but they're not communicators communicators get authentic responses to the message being communicated. So that's that's the first thing. So learn to be a better communicator. That makes you a better songwriter, speech writer, everything, everything that goes into message delivery. And the second thing is, like I said at first, find out how your that business is currently working. What now, right now, is what is happening to make people visible? Make that voice and the work of that voice visible, both in person and on the Internet. Excellent. And thank you. This is the last question. What do radio and teleseminar hosts, podcasters, and other non-visible presenters need to know about the voice? Oh, Oh, yeah, that's so universally true that when we can't see the person we're talking to it's hard to get that call and response thing going in our heads you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. like so what you need to know is that you need to speak when you can't see the person in front of you just like they are in front of you and that that uh, so you've got to conjure up your own back to the beginning uh, that I said that you conjure up the avatar for that person and imagine them, uh, you know, imagine their, their eyes, imagine their body language and facial language. And does it look like they're listening to you? And maybe they're not. So maybe you need to pause for a second. And this is all something you, you play in your mind with. So when you're on the phone, the other thing you need to know so that's one thing you need to use your communication skills as if they are someone you can see. And the other thing is you also need to use your posture to control your breath. Otherwise you're going to get really, really tired at the end of a day long of podcasting or, or uh, being on the phone like a lot of business people are, or being a professor and you're, or, you know, long, long lectures, or that's very tiring on the voice unless you control your breath the whole time. So the second thing to know about the talking to the invisible is move your head back when you're doing it. Move your head back over your tailbone and use your arms or your hands in such a way that you're widening your rib cage, maybe elbows behind you a little bit instead of uh, letting your ribcage fall in. And the other thing to know is this takes a lot of energy. It takes more energy to control your breath than it does to just 
collapse and let your breath go on through, you know, <laughs> without controlling it. So that calls up the need to not have donuts, but have some protein before you you do your vocal performance. So everything that, you know, do, do, uh... oh, and one last thing I'll share with you uh, that goes into this, <laughs> that goes into everything about the voice. And that is, unless you're allergic to it, diluted pineapple juice is the very best because the bromelain enzyme adds some hydration and soothing, almost like a meat tenderizer, to the to the pharynx, the tissues of the pharynx. And you'll notice if you'll take a little container with about three-fourths water or so and one-fourth pineapple juice, and I'm talking about the little Dole's can is fine, and you take that with you and you sip on it through your vocal presentation, whether it's speaking or singing, then you're going to notice a difference in the way your throat feels because especially, especially if it's a dehydrating environment, you know, kind of a dry environment, or if you, you've just been talking a long time because that does expel moisture from your cords. So try that pineapple juice. Okay, wonderful. I'm so glad you gave that um, last tip there about the pineapple juice because I heard you give it in um, one of the podcasts that you were on before. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is just golden. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it and is. So, it's um, a game changer. Yes. I, and Judy, I, I want to just uh, say this one more time to our audience. Judy Rotman is an award-winning vocal coach, recording artist, performer, speaker, author, songwriter, studio producer, and blogger or podcaster. Okay, I just want them to know that one more time, Thank but, you. Yeah, just to let them know how special you are, <laughs> and you have been a fabulous guest. Also, I want to say that you have a beautiful voice, both singing and speaking. It's oh, just so thank beautiful. you. That's why I was so quiet. I was just like absorbing it all because I heard you on the other podcast. I was like, what, what a treat. <laughs> so I just feel like you're a golden guest. And, and well, you um, know, what's I, cool is to use is when we use our past experience to actually be valuable in somebody else's voice. So yes. that, thank you for that. I'm so glad you, you, you liked it. Yes, I did. Thank you. And I'm, I, I'm sure you have graced our audience as well. And, um, I do want to say goodbye for now. I don't. I never want to say goodbye to a guest. Keep in touch. Um, yeah, yeah. And yes. thank you for having me on. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure. Okay, thank you, Judy. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. Okay, and there it was, everyone. The beautiful Judy Rodman. She was just absolutely amazing. And um, again, as I told her, I just feel like you know a golden gift was given to me today and to all of you okay because what I learn I love to share with you my audience and um and share these amazing guests like we had on today I I do have a, another guest coming on a little later um I think I have two actually I have a film director and also um I believe he's a oh he's an entrepreneur with a a really great business that so he's going to share some 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 not tricks but tips and advice with you all okay so I want to go ahead and say goodbye to you for now and everyone have your nice coffee or your favorite hot beverage enjoy it and try to listen to our podcast here you can find this episode at coffeechatwithcamille.com Right? Thank you. Bye for now.